All right, everybody, and we're back. Welcome to another fascinating, exciting episode of everyone's favorite mediocre program. This podcast is just okay. I'm your host, Nick Rose. I'm your co-host, Paul Rose. And I'm here to remind you that if life gives you melons, you might be dyslexic. Let's hit the theme. All right, and we're back. How's it going, Paul? It's going really good. How about with you? I'm doing pretty good, man. It's been a busy week. It's been a long week, and we haven't had a lot of time to record, so I'm glad we're doing this tonight. Y- yeah, me too. Oh, sorry. Um, go ahead. It's okay. We're doing CMAS at school. Yeah? Tell me all about that. Oh, my gosh. It's really stressful. We have to write about, like, 10 essays um, in under an hour. And you, you're getting pushed for time, and yeah, I'm not that much. I'm not really worried about it, but I know, I know it's totally stressful, dude. You've been going through a lot this week. Yeah, yeah, you've been you've been tuckered out, man. And I know that's another reason why we haven't had a lot of time to pre-record a bunch of podcasts like we yeah. do, because um, I want you to be able to go to bed early and get ready for your testing. So. Um, I know this takes a lot of our night time. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> hey, uh, this episode's coming out on Easter, right? Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, just making sure. Yeah. Why? Um, cause I was okay. We're gonna. Oh, sorry, I'm so nervous. Um, Don't be nervous. Just relax. Breathe. Okay. Sorry. Um, we're doing. Should we? talk about the theme oh we will in a little bit but oh, you know this okay. is our rant and raves i'd like to know how you've been this week because um a lot of the times <clears throat> during the week when you get so busy and stuff yeah i don't really get a chance to talk to you much i'm always like yelling at you guys being like oh get out of my face clean your room do this <laughs> uh, right yeah. and oh next thing you know it's bedtime <laughs> so how about this have you watched any good movies lately um not uh Oh, yes. Actually, we saw Sonic 2 in Yeah, theaters. we went and saw Sonic 2. Yeah, that one was awesome. Tell me about it. Oh, my God. But I don't want to give out spoilers. You don't have to say spoilers. Tell you what. It was awesome. Yeah. I loved it. Me so too. what we did is we watched Sonic 1 the night before as a recap. Mm-hmm. And then we went to the theater. We surprised you guys and went and saw Sonic 2. Yeah. Um, I loved it. If you loved the first movie, you're going to love this one. Yeah. And if you're like me and you... Uh, you're one of the lucky ones who's actually grown up playing the original games because, I mean, we play Sonic 2 how many times a week oh for the last how many years? I do that on my free time. Yeah, your sister, who's only six years old, can beat the game because <laughs> she flies through Sonic 2. That's like her favorite thing. Her favorite character is Tails. Yeah. And I loved this one because Tails is in it. Mm-hmm. She brought her little Tails stuffy and her Sonic blanket to cuddle up in. Yeah. Um, it, there's a lot of references to the video games in the movie. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So if you've played the game, you're also going to love it. No. Yeah. I'm sorry. Who are you saying sorry to? Me. Don't oh, sorry. Okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, Sonic 2 was awesome. And I know in the last couple episodes you were talking about uh, playing Kirby. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you helped me beat the game, right? Totally, man. I know I I missed a lot of the game. I didn't get to see a lot of it. But, yeah, I swooped in and saved you at the, at the end there. Yeah, you helped me with the final boss. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah. I'm going to have to go back and play it myself now. It was really hard. Yeah. Uh, what else, man? What else have we been doing? Um, We watched that new Easter Bunny Massacre movie. Oh, God. Yes, we did. Oh, my God. I was... <laughs> thing is, I was really looking forward to seeing that after school. It was a horrible movie. Mm-hmm. I tell you, man, I have so many movies that I've been duped up, duped by. Yeah. Um, they, uh, the trailer looks great. The artwork looks great. Yeah. And then you watch the movie and you're like, oh my god, what is this? So, it's a movie called Easter Bunny Massacre. Right? Because yeah. Easter, right? We like to do 
horror themed things on holidays because that's how weird we are right like the leprechaun and krampus oh sure absolutely there's a you know what there's an actual horror movie for every holiday if you look hard enough (laughs) and there's a movie that i want to show you but not until you're a little older it's a little more um advanced like uh uh, maturity level Ooh, what is it it's called holidays It's an anthology movie where uh, several different directors took on the project to direct a short horror story based around a certain holiday. Cool. Kevin Smith, of all people, did the one with Halloween. Awesome. So his his story's Halloween, his daughter's in it and stuff. So that's nice. what made me want to watch the movie. But there's this really creepy Easter scene in it. With this, like, hybrid Easter Bunny Jesus monster. Oh, my God. Dude, it's nuts. But I'll show you when you're older. It's a little it's a little out there. Okay. So, anyway, we watched this movie. It's called Easter Bunny Massacre. Yeah. And on the cover, it has this really cool-looking uh, scary bunny. And it says, this year there will be no Good Friday. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Because it, you bored the audience half to death. I fell asleep. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I kind of dozed off, too. Yeah. So, basically, the premise of this movie is that there's, what, how many how many guys? Like, five, six people? Uh, s- uh, five or six. Yeah, yeah, and they're like raving at this campfire, right? Like yeah. Elitch Garden style. There, there were no subtitles, so we couldn't really figure out what was going on. Yeah, dude, there was no subtitles. They were all like, and they all had like really thick British and Irish accents. So and then was, they were all muttering. Oh, dude, the, the sound, the sound mix was horrible because yeah. they're talking and like no sound is coming out. Yeah. The audio mix is terrible, but yeah. anyway, so they're like they're raving, you know. Yeah. Like Elitch Garden style. <laughs> the Venga bus, you know. That's yeah. what I imagine because there was no music playing. <laughs> but uh, this, there, it's like these these popular guys and this uh, this woman, I guess, this girl, and they're like oh, yeah. talking about getting into college, and mm-hmm. she's like the popular girl, but she's like really rude and bossy to everybody. Yeah. And she ends up getting murdered. I'm not spoiling anything because this is on the back of the box. <laughs> she gets murdered. In the middle of the night by someone in a bunny costume, right? Yeah. And then a year later, they meet back up because they want to cover it up. They don't want to get in trouble. Nobody knows how she died, but they don't want to call the cops for some reason Mm because they're all probably secretly criminals. They all go their separate ways. They all get invitations to this house a year later to find out who did it. Yeah. It's like Clue almost, right? Except they go to this house and there's like Amazon packages showing up and and then they find out uh no one actually sent out the invita- invi- yeah. invitations yeah. yeah yeah and it's just like a lot of talking and not enough massacre yeah which you know and I'll, I'll tell you this too I watched this movie the other night with your mom called uh oh my god what's it called it was it was this metal metal movie metal lords. Ooh. Uh, Metal Lords on, on Netflix. Really good movie. It reminded me of you, actually. That's why I wanted to watch it. Nice. It's about this kid. He's a drummer. Ooh, like me. Yeah, sounds familiar. And him and his best friend are in high school. It reminded me of me a lot of, of it, too, because it's these two loser kids in high school, and they love mu- metal music, and they're in a band, and it's just the two of them, and they join this, they try to join this battle of the bands. Uh, yeah. With these all these popular kids, even though they're not popular, right? Yeah. So they try to recruit a bass player, and they get this girl who's really amazing at the cello. Um, but anyway, I won't spoil it. It's a really good movie. Okay. And um, I forget where I was going with this, but oh, okay. So it's it's a comedy slash drama. Okay. Right. It's R rated, but there's a scene. This is this is what tells you that I watch way too many horror movies. Yeah. This movie is not a horror movie. It's really good. Man. Really good movie. Uh, the music is amazing. Okay. <clears throat> it's got a lot of Metallica. Nice. And Judas Priest and Iron Maiden and oh. Sabbath. You know, all the good bands. Yeah. And um, they go to this party where all these popular kids are. And here I am thinking that uh, the only thing missing in this movie is a man with a chainsaw. <laughs> Because these, I want to, I want them to hack these teens up. Not the kids in the metal band; they're cool. <laughs> yeah. The popular kids at the party. <laughs> Imagine Leatherface showing up. That's what I'm saying, dude. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. The new Scream was really good too. Ooh. Yeah, we're gonna have to have a Scream marathon because I loved the fifth movie. Nice. So it connects with the previous. Oh yeah, ones? dude! It's a sequel, straight up sequel. They bring back the legendary characters. They reference nice. the first, second, and third movie a lot. Cool. Really good. 
We're going to have to rewatch this. Oh, dude, I got to make up for that horrible Easter movie we watched. Because, yes. you know what? I don't even think I don't even think it was on Easter <laughs> that they met up. They had a quote-unquote Easter egg hunt in the movie tonight. Yeah. Where they had like little little fuzzy peep chickens. Yeah. I don't know. It was stupid. Don't mm-hmm. don't waste your time. I've been duped by that by that artwork. Yeah. But I thought it would be cool for you because it's Easter. Let's do an Easter theme movie and so what were you gonna say? Uh cut like Humpty Dumpty. Oh yeah, the curse of Humpty Dumpty. Where the artwork on the DVD box was great. Oh my god. The trailer was amazing. The movie put me to sleep. <laughs> it, there was no Humpty or Dumpty. Man, uh, now I don't really want to watch that uh, killer clown birthday massacre. Now. <laughs> well, here's the deal, dude. Um, that artwork was amazing. Yeah, so I have, yeah, I don't know, almost a thousand horror movies yeah. in my collection. And we have Shudder and all this stuff. I have all the good ones. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll I'll curate the good ones for you. We'll stop buying uh, cool box art DVDs from Walmart. Yeah, There's so many. Of them. I don't know why the microphones are doing that. Do you hear that? Yeah, that's kind of buzzing. Mm-hmm. So anyway, um, anything else you want to add to our rants and raves? I don't think so. No, I see that you've been working on solving your Rubik's cube. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm getting so close to it. I see that, man. You're doing really good at that. Thanks. Yeah. Um, well, I don't think I have much else here. We've been uh, comic book shopping. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I just got this cool new book called uh, Something is Killing the Children. Yeah. What is Killing the Children? Uh, I haven't found out yet. I'm still in like the first chapter. Is but... it Black Eyed Kids? No. See how I turned that around to our last episode? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. That was a good episode. Yeah. Probably one of my favorites that we've done so far. Nice. Okay. So this one is going to be just as good, hopefully... Because I was thinking, all right, it's Easter. We like, we like doing paranormal stuff, right? Yeah. So I came up with this one. <clears throat> this is on the legend of the Bunny Man Bridge. Ooh, yeah. that sounds creepy. The scary truth behind an infamous urban legend. Weird. I know, dude. So do you know about the, the Bunny Man Bridge? No, I've never heard of it. Sweet, man. Me neither. <laughs> so let's learn a little bit. Nice. Dim the lights. Are they dimmed? No. Oh, okay. Well, that's all right. So, <laughs> all right. So anyway, I'm going to set the mood here, right? Mm-hmm. At the stroke of midnight on Halloween, Uh-oh. Yeah, a killer in a white rabbit suit awaits. Lore has it that if you speak his name three times, he'll appear. Nope. Oh, you want me to say it? No. I didn't say candy, man. Yes. Or uh, Beetlejuice. <laughs> So anyway, his name's Bunny Man. Just to say that one time. I don't want to appear, right? Uh, But don't expect to survive. He'll slash your throat and leave your body dangling from the bridge. No. Yeah, dude. No. (laughs) Um, Another rendition of the story. The spirit of an escaped mental patient haunts the railroad bridge. Did I say where this was? No. I guess we'll get there because I don't know either. Is it close? I, no, no. We have tons of bridges out here, but they ain't close to no bunnies. I'll tell you that much, man. Okay. <laughs> Rabbits are scary. I know, but this is a dude in a bunny suit, man. Is Did he get his rabies shot? Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe he's rabid. <gasps> That's why he's so scary. Is his name Cujo? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, he escaped the mental uh, the mental hospital uh, with the uh, intent of avenging the murders of his wife and child who were slain nearby living in the woods near the bridge he killed and ate rabbits wearing their skins and leaving their mutilated bodies on the trees right well hey you know what no animal should go to waste right yeah (laughs) (coughs) one halloween night taunted by some town children he killed and mutilated them too hanging their corpses from trees around the bridge i get that man kids can be cruel hey not you you're cool You're one of the good ones. Thanks. (laughs) In another spin of the same theme, he's the ghost of an escapee of a long-closed nearby asylum. Ugh. Yeah. Dressed in a rabbit suit, he throws axes or chainsaws or hatchets at the cars of young couples who park by the bridge late at night. Is he a video game villain? (laughs) He's like a ninja. He's like the Hammer Brother in Mario Brothers. He's throwing hatchets at you. Oh my gosh. He's a... 
Teenage Mutant Ninja Bunny. Ninja Bunny. There yeah. you go, man. All right. So there are plenty of versions of the Bunny Man Bridge Legend, all equally eerie. Don't say his name twice. Well, I didn't say it in a row. Yeah, we're golden, brother. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, making the one... And we're not on a bridge. You have to say it on the bridge. So... Oh, I thought it was anywhere. Nah, man. Like I said, it's not Candyman. Oh, okay. You gotta say it in front of a mirror five times. Don't do it. I will. Don't do it. Is it real? Yeah, he's gonna hack you up. What's the legend of him? Uh, this is not the episode on the Candyman. That's uh-huh. what the legend is. Legend is Bunny Man. Maybe next episode. This ain't no Willy Wonka episode, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Can we <laughs> yeah, I was waiting for it, man. Nice. <laughs> there are plenty of versions of the Bunny Man Bridge legend, all equally eerie, making the one-lane tunnel on Colchester Road such a popular spot that police stake it out each Halloween night, mm-hmm. chasing off trespassers searching for a scare. So this is what happens on Halloween night. I know this is our Easter episode, but bunnies and murder, I thought... Pfft, Perfect for Easter, right? Yeah. Yeah, good Friday. All right. (laughs) The Bunny Man Bridge was featured in the Fox documentary Scariest Places on Earth and is mentioned innumerable times across the internet. And you know it's true if it's on the internet. Yeah. Because if it wasn't true, why would it be there? The internet never lies. Yeah, but people do. Yeah. Yeah. Google doesn't. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I learned that from watching (laughs) Scooby-Doo. It's always the next door neighbor. (laughs) The tale arguably brings comers that uh, the town of Clifton, tucked away in the woods between Manassas and Fairfax Station, pre-pandemic, thousands came to thrill at the Clifton Haunted Trail, which is on its website, uh, features a creepy illustration of a man in a bunny suit. Uh. But what's the truth behind the lore? Brian Conley, a historian activist for Fairfax Public Library, heard about the Bunny Man all his life, and when he returned from college to work in the library system, the haunting tale seemed to follow him. After several patrons asked him about the truth of the stories, he set out to find out. Uh Uh-oh. Yeah, stay tuned. (laughs) First, he delved into Fairfax County Police records, searching for reports of old and sensational murders. He wrote in his December 2008 paper, The Bunny Man Unmasked, The Real-Life Origins of an Urban Legend. Ooh. Yeah, you can click the link and read the article. Nice. Yeah. So anyway, here's a recap. He found one uh, that might help... he found one that might help account for some of the bunny man's background it happened in february of 1949 and made headlines for months the gruesome slayings of a mother and her eight-month-old baby girl oh. i know dude people are nuts the two were found in a shallow grave in fairfax after disappearing during a car ride with their husband Uh-oh. police soon found the victims in a shallow grave the woman had been beaten and shot and the girl buried alive yeah, disclaimer, this is a this is a pretty dark episode, man. Yeah. Uh the husband and father were were the husband and father was eventually arrested, convicted, and sent to a mental institution. Uh, uh next librarians searched for any evidence of a man dressed in a rabbit costume terrorizing people in the Washington region. This is in Washington. Oh yeah, so see, stick with us. We'll come back to the news there. <laughs> According to his paper, he found a gem in the Washington Post on October 22nd, 1970. The headline read, Man in Bunny Suit Sought in Fairfax. Ooh. Okay. So the story detailed the harrowing experience of an Air Force cadet who went parking with a girl on Guinea Road in Fairfax. Um, the military man told of a man in a white suit with long bunny ears throwing a hatchet through the car's windshield, then skipping off into the night, according to Conley's paper. Military man. There goes Peter Cottontown. Hopping on the bunny trip. What? Throwing axes and hatchets at your face. Why are you singing? That's the that's his theme song. Seriously? Yeah, seriously. The bunny man made another appearance, according to the Post, on October 30th, 1970. Uh-oh. 70s were a weird time, dude. Yeah. That's for sure. Uh, neighbors on Guinea Road reported seeing a man in a bunny suit hacking away at a house under construction with a hatchet. Confronted by a security guard, the bunny ran off. Just to make sure, hatchets are like ninja stars, right? No, no, no. Hatchets is like a small axe. 
Oh, yeah. that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, police investigated but never found any evidence of a bunny man in the area. After a few weeks, the case was filed away forever. That would be pretty nuts if it was a ninja weapon. <laughs> a bunny with a ninja star? <laughs> that would be nunchucks. awesome. That's an Usagi Yojimbo story right there, dude. (laughs) And for those listening, that's a rare Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle reference I just made. So, there you go. Uh, Who the bunny man was and what motivated him to act in such a bizarre manner is still a mystery. However, the available evidence points to the October 1970 events as the genesis of the bunny man legend. And there you have one interpretation of the story. Nice. Mm-hmm. So the librarian's research uncovers some truth um, in a story that has become part of the area's folklore, and its creepy reputation continues. Okay. And it makes you wonder what other terrifying bits of the bunny man lore might be true. Ooh. What do you think? I think he's real. So, I mean, that's that's basically all I could find on the bunny man. I thought it was pretty interesting, but I don't know whatever happened to him or if they ever caught him or what. Hmm. Um, is he still there? I don't know. Whoa. I mean, I guess that's what makes it a legend, right? You, you <laughs> yeah. believe in it, and there you have it. Why don't they just burn the place down? Because it's a town where people live, dude. Well, then, no, because people wouldn't live there if People they live here, that. dude. Do you go outside after dark? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't even like going outside to get the mail. Yeah. And our, our mailbox is attached to the house. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, it's getting nicer. Our yard's getting much nicer. Yeah. So, um, you know what? I wanted to bring this up, too. Um, this is, man, episode 105, I think. I think last episode was 104, so yeah. 104, 105, something like that. I don't know. I, I didn't say it at the beginning because I got the last episode wrong that we did, and I didn't... You know. Anyway, um, the thing is, for Easter, I like to do holiday episodes. And I know you're new to the show. Yeah. In the past, I've done holiday episodes. So you can go back and listen to them. Uh, episode 64 uh, was called April's Fool. Okay. Because it's all about the history of April Fool's Day. Nice. Which I thought was cool. Um, episode 65 is called Hoppy Easter. That one's a good one. There's a lot of good facts about the origins of Easter and all the other cool stuff. If you're not looking for something horror related. <laughs> okay, I'll try to listen to and that. And then episode 77 is called Happy Easter, You Fools! <laughs> because that was the episode that came out when Easter landed on April Fool's Day. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. I remember uh, when... Um... When your cousin pranked you? Mm-hmm. He injected peeps with hot sauce. <laughs> Yeah, that was pretty messed up, dude. And you ate that peep. I, buddy, I felt so bad for you. Nothing will stop me from eating peeps. Uh, apparently not. Not even hot sauce. What kind of hot sauce was it? I don't remember. Sriracha? I just remember it El was burning tapatio? my mouth. Was it... Pace? I don't know. I don't know either. I don't know so either, guessing. either. But the thing is, I didn't know he had done that to you guys. I saw peeps... And I wanted to eat one, and then I saw your face, and I went, oh, no, what's wrong with them? Never trust anybody on the 1st of April. Especially my cousin. Yeah, I know, right? Um, well, anyway, that's uh, that's all I got on the Bunny Man. I was super excited to do this episode, and it was kind of kind of short on the on the horror vibe, but it's uh, whatever, dude. Basically, a dude in a bunny suit throwing hatchets at people. It's pretty metal. Nice. I was uh, really excited to do this Um it was on my mind at school today. <sighs> Me too, dude. Me too. Not at school. I didn't go to school. I had the day off, though. <laughs> it was nice. You know what? I've, uh, I'll have i tell you, man. I've been watching. I've been getting back into the Marvel stuff. Okay. You know, because you have all the Marvel movies. Yeah. Right? And they, if you watch them in the sequential order, leading up to the Avengers Infinity War, mm-hmm. you know, you learn about all the characters and stuff, and then Thanos comes, and spoilers, he does the snap. <laughs> And half the world disappears. Dun, dun, dun. The snap. Sounds Dude. like a cheesy horror movie. It probably is a cheesy horror movie. I could probably find it for you. <laughs> nice. But anyway, you know, leading up to the snap, when he snaps his finger and half the world just disappears into a cloud of dust. Uh, I have two questions. Does he get to choose which side of the earth? No. And does it kill him? No. Whoa. Doesn't kill him because he snapped his finger, but oh. half the Avengers died. Oh, no. And then Endgame 
was like the end of it for me, right? So you have all yeah. the way back, starting with Iron Man when that came out. Sequentially, you'd watch Captain America and Captain Marvel first, but yeah. uh, Iron Man started all of this in, in this like almost fifteen year span of movies coming out. Okay. You know? um, kind of like the Harry Potter series where you get all these movies. Harry but anyway, Potter's awesome. I know, but um, so at the end of it, after End Game, yeah. I won't spoil it for those who haven't seen it, but a certain couple of Avengers don't make it in the movie. Uh-oh. They end up they end up dying. And that was like it was it was so heartbreaking because you've grown up with these characters and you watch them for so long, right? And then that that book ends it for you, right? Yeah. And then you have the Spider Man movie that came out right after, and it's like, okay, well this continues on the endgame um storyline after this. Okay, now it's book ended, it's done. Oops, sorry. And <clears throat> from here, I, yeah, hey, good one, good one. Um, from there, that's when I cut it off and I said, okay, well, I'm done with the Marvel movies then because they, they announced like you know Phase Four and all this stuff coming out. Yeah. So you had, um, I know I'm going off on a rant here, but um, so you had these other series that came out afterwards, like Loki, Black Widow, yeah. uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, mm-hmm. um, or something else, Hawkeye. Okay. You had the two Venom movies that came out. I don't remember Hawkeye. We haven't watched them yet. Is oh. what I'm, is the point I'm getting to? Oh. Uh, the two Venom movies. Then you have the Eternals, Shang Chi, and the the Ten Legend of the Ten Rings, I believe. Ooh. And then Moon Knight. Okay. And then you had all the series too, like Daredevil, Defenders, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Punisher. So many different Marvel characters and properties that it's getting to the point where I don't even follow all the characters and they're introducing characters that I don't know. Yeah. When we, all the way up through Avengers, I knew everybody because I collected the comic books and watched the shows and everything for years, right? Yeah. Anyway, last night we watched the new Spider Man movie. Oh, wait. You missed it. Oh. You missed okay. it. But um, I put it on. Spider-Man uh, No Way Home? Yeah. Oh, my God, dude. Okay, so on the cover of the movie, it says, the best Marvel movie of all time. No, Iron Man was. I don't know, man. I watched the new Spider-Man, and I think it lived up pretty well to its reputation as one of the best Marvel movies ever made. You sure? Uh, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, and I watch them all right now, simultaneously, in this room. But Batman's the best Marvel movie. Batman is not Marvel, brother. You know that. Batman's DC Comics. Spider-Man is Marvel. But isn't Marvel owned by DC? No, they're rival companies. Oh. DC has Batman, Superman, Justice League. Oh. All those guys. Okay. Marvel is the Avengers and X-Men and Spider-Man and Ghost Rider. Nice. And all that stuff. So anyway, the point is we started watching Moon Knight a couple weeks ago. Yeah. I'm loving it. I don't. He's one of the characters that I don't know. Okay. So that goes back to why I took you guys, sorry, to the comic book store the other day. I was looking for Moon Knight comics. Ooh. Because I want to know more about this character, right? As I'm watching the show, I want to know who he is. Mm -hmm. Mark Spector and all this stuff. See, I'm learning. But anyway, that got me back into going, okay, well, I want to watch the new Spider-Man movie too, which ties into Doctor Strange and the Avengers and the multiverse and all this other crazy complex stuff that the comic books get into. Yeah. So after that, I started watching Falcon and Winter Snow, uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. Ooh, what's that one about? The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Captain America's buddies. Oh. So it's a continuation there from the Avengers as well. Okay. Anyway, long story short, long rant short, I'm back in all in with the Marvel properties, and I have I think eight more series and movies to catch up on that I'm behind. Okay. Everything after Endgame, I haven't seen, and there's so much of it. Okay. So I think when you go to bed tonight, I'm gonna watch Loki. Is it is the Endgame uh like Lord of the Rings where it has um doesn't Lord of the Rings have like isn't it like a five hour film? <laughs> yes, the uh the extended cut. Oh, which is crazy because we just watched that, yep. and it took me and your mom like. I don't know, 10 days to watch it all because we'd watch it. Then 40 minutes in, she'd fall asleep and have to pause it. Okay, we'll watch it the next night. And then 40 minutes later, she's asleep. Yeah. Yeah. It was a lot, man. But anyway, 
I'm loving the Marvel properties, man. I I, I wish I could sit sit you down and watch them all with you. Because yeah. they are such good movies. I love them especially because I grew up reading the comic books. Yeah. Um, yeah. Comic books, the video games, the X-Men TV series. And I heard a spoiler. Um, I don't know if it's true because Doctor Strange isn't out yet. Yeah. But the trailer is out. The trailer came out. I heard a rumor here. You're hearing it first. Uh-oh. That in the new Doctor Strange movie that's coming out in the next couple months. Yeah. There's a cameo. With Stanley? No, unfortunately Stanley died a couple years ago. Aww. His last cameo was Captain Marvel. Man. I know. I saw him in passing at Comic-Con a couple years ago, but the line was so big I couldn't meet him. Oh. But I saw him from a distance, and I was look, that's Stan right there. That was so cool. I was cool. in the same room with him, but I didn't that's get to so actually cool. say hi to him. So, no, there is a cameo in Doctor Strange with Patrick Stewart as Professor Xavier. <gasps> cool! So here's the deal. Here's the deal with Marvel. I don't know if you know this. So Marvel in the 90s was almost bankrupt. Yeah. And so Stan was desperate and he sold a lot of his properties to different film companies. Fox got, you know, Fox Media got X-Men and Ghost Rider and Fantastic just, Four. Just for money? Yeah. Oh. And so they distribute, they own these characters now, right? Yeah. And then you have Sony who owns Spider-Man. And then you have Marvel who owns everybody else. Right, okay. and because of that, <clears throat> in the comic books, all these characters coexist on the same planet and timeline, right? Yeah. Like in the books, Captain America fought in World War II with Wolverine. Okay. Okay, but because of the property uh, things for the movies, you can't ever have Captain America and Wolverine in the same movie. That's confusing. I know it, it's pretty ridiculous, but anyway, <clears throat> over the last couple years, yeah. Marvel obtained the rights to all their characters back. Ooh. So the next phase of movies, you can have Fantastic Four and Spider-Man and the X-Men meet the Avengers, and it's all back together. Cool. And so they're talking about the next Doctor Strange movie is going to be setting up another X-Men movie, which those two properties have never been able to coexist. So, like, um... They're like mashing up the timeline, like one's happening while the other's happening at the no. same time? No, well, not a timeline, it's just like characters. The oh. characters exist in the same universe. Yeah, so like something's <coughs> happening. Never mind. So like, say, Spider-Man's saving the city of New York, right? Yeah. At the exact same time in Massachusetts, you know... Cyclops is doing something with Beast. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yes, absolutely. Not a different, like timeline no they're just like neighboring cities almost and yes. they're getting to the point now because of the properties they can actually come back and coexist together which i'm really excited about that's really cool i can't mm -hmm. wait to watch that yeah me too dude so anyway i know i went on a movie rant i don't i don't know why i guess that's just what i've been up to lately is just watching movies man nice watching movies because the world is a scary place sometimes yeah and, and a stressful place, too. I know you're doing your, your testing and stuff, and I know you get stressed out, too. It's nice to escape. Yes. Yeah, and I know we haven't we haven't got to play many games lately, like Mario Kart and stuff like that, but um, movies and the X-Files. I'm watching the X-Files at night. Yeah. I'm almost to season seven. Ooh. There's 11 seasons. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, are you, so is it like a series that um, every episode... Uh, connects to each other? That's another confusing one. So the X-Files, there's two different types of storylines going on. Yeah. Okay? You have your mythos, um, your mythos episodes, which is basically your storyline. So your episodes all connect together to form one big story. Okay. In between those, they do a monster of the week, which is like a standalone episode that has nothing to do with the story. Okay. Even though it has character development. Nice. It's kind of like, uh, so the main goal of the show is uh, this agent, Mulder, Fox yeah. Mulder, he's the conspiracy theorist. His sister was abducted by aliens when he was nine years old. Ooh. So he joined the FBI following his dad's footsteps to find his sister. <clears throat> they bring in Scully, who is a medical examiner, to discredit him because she's a scientist. Okay. So she, they want to prove him wrong. 
But everything that they go on proves that aliens and monsters exist. Nice. Even though at the end, Scully never sees it or denies it or whatever, right? Yeah. So that's the main storyline of the show. In between that, you have your monster of the week where it just shows them battling some monster or doing some weird paranormal thing. And uh, that's that. But it went on for nine seasons. Ooh. Two movies, two spinoff series, Millennium and The Lone Gunman. Okay. And then a couple years ago, they brought it back for season 10 and 11. That's really cool. Really cool. Really hard to find on DVD. I just got season 11 in the mail today. That's so cool. And The Lone Gunman. And I think in, by next week, I should have all three seasons of Millennium, too, which are incredibly hard to find. Oh. And I've only ever seen one episode of Millennium. I don't know if I talked about this last week with, uh, with Millennium. I don't it, think you did. Okay, it's a spinoff show on the X-Files, right? It's like a paranormal law and order, basically. Yeah. In season three, episode five to be exact, special guest stars all four original members of KISS. <gasps> playing themselves as well as different characters. Ace and Peter play cops. Gene Simmons plays uh, a businessman. Nice. And Paul plays a movie director. That's so cool. Mm-hmm. They did it to promote the Psycho Circus album back in 98. And I remember staying up late to record it on, on my VCR back in the day. And it's yeah. the only episode of Millennium I've ever seen. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, dude. So I'm super excited to get that in the mail. Nice. I'm going to have to watch that one. Yeah, dude. For real. So anyway, um, all the talking and ranting aside, is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, I'm not sure. No. No? All right, well, then let's hit the trivia theme. You ready to quiz some people? Yep. All right, let's hit the trivia theme and ask the question of the week. We're back after that theme. Uh, take it away, Paul. What's our trivia question from last week? Uh, our last week, tri- our last week's trivia question. Um, let's see. What TV alien comes from the planet Melmac? Mm-hmm. The answer was Elf. Elf. That's right. Uh, doesn't Elf stand for alien life form? Yes, he does. Nice, dude. I'm so proud of you for knowing that. Thanks. I loved Elf growing up. Okay. Um. All right. Question of the week. Okay. Question of the week. Who directed Frankenstein and Bride of Frankenstein, starring Boris Karloff? Ooh, that's a really good question, Paul. Okay, so you heard it here first. Answer the question at uh, justokpod at gmail dot com. And for those of us, those of you listening to it, obviously, uh, we are on SoundCloud. Originally, uh, this podcast is just okay on SoundCloud.com. Uh, we're also on iTunes and Apple Music. Okay. Uh, search in the search bar. This podcast is just okay. And if you don't like either of those, you can go to Amazon Music or Audible. Ooh. Yeah, we're available there for free. Just search up this podcast is just okay. You find a picture of me with a horse mask on the old logo. <laughs> So I was gonna bring a new mask down here, dude. We gotta we gotta upload a picture still. Oh, should we do that tonight? We could do that tonight. Yes. Nice. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I don't have any emails this week. I didn't check them to be honest with you. So we'll save that for next week. Um, what about you? Anything else new? Um, I don't think so. All right. Do you have any Easter hopes and wishes for tonight? <laughs> no. No. You just want everyone to find that golden egg, right? Yep. And the golden goose. <laughs> And not get sucked down a trash compactor for being naughty. You get that as a Willy Wonka reference. Yeah. Me and my movies, man. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> All right, dude. Well, um, oh, hey, you do have one more thing for me. What? I almost forgot. You haven't told me a joke of the week. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Okay. Um. What was it? Oh, yeah. Why can't you bring a Pokemon to the bathroom? I don't know. Why can't you bring a Pokemon to the bathroom? He might Pikachu. <laughs> I love it, dude. You're clever. You're Thanks. funny. You're amazing. Thanks. You are the best co-host I've ever had. Thank you. You're welcome, buddy. I can't wait to do this with you again next time. 
All right, man, you ready to do a sign-off? Uh, sure. All right, everybody have yourselves a week, and we will catch you guys next time. Next time.